rethink everything you know about being a next generation mortgage loan originator. This book right here is going to change thousands of career trajectories. And it's something that you can read over a weekend. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to TLOP with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, <clears throat> JC. Smacking on his lips like he's my granny with her teeth out, John Coleman. Yo, yeah, what's poppin'? Ah, just New Year, new us, John. The, same the old, same old. New Year old. is March. Man. It is it's March. About to be the end of the year. It is March, but this new book dropped, and it is fire. It truly is. And I don't get excited about book drops. Yes, you I, do. You love books. I do nerd. love books, but I don't get excited about book drops. I normally don't like get a hold of books until they're already cool. Right? Like until someone's already read it and be like, yo, Dio, you would love this one. <laughs> or it, like Wall Street Journal has has grabbed that's a hold so, of it and they've made it number one because that's how I roll, John. You old successful people are so corny. Like, oh, let me give you this good book I read so you can ascertain the same knowledge I have. Just, just give me a scratch ticket and keep it moving. <laughs> <In the> fucking <laughs> book. Hey, that's how it works, and that's what I'm into. But this book is really cool because yours truly got to pen a chapter. So now you can say you're a published author. Skip the line. Skip the line, sir. Can't, is that how it works? Yes. You're, are, are we going VIP in Vegas? Because I'm just saying, hey, look, I'm a published author. Just put it in your uh, in your um, bio somewhere. On all your bio, just say published author, host, creator. You know what's crazy? Like last year, mm -hmm. I wrote and was published by Forbes. And there you are. I wrote and was published by Housing Wire. Published author, Dustin. And I don't think we have published author anywhere in any marketing collateral. Well, I also don't have access to your LinkedIn, so I'd say that's more of a... Do we blame Nikki? No, that's more of a you problem. Oh, that's a me you problem. You logging into your profile. You. I haven't touched social media going on three three months now, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Good for you. But if you, hey, flip right here to chapter 119. Ooh. Do you know what, what one that, of my favorite numbers is? 19. So this is chapter 119. So this is 100 past my favorite number. That's it's right chapter there. 14. You mean page no, 119. I, I, I meant page 119. I know, did I say chapter? You did. I was looking at it. It's it says been a chapter long 14. Day. It has been it's been a long, long. I've already been to the dentist today. Tomorrow I have to go to the doctor, the ear, nose, and throat doctor. They're going to throw a, a, a scope the down my Why? throat. For what? And then next month they're going to throw a scope up my rear end. Why? That's what happens when you turn old, John. You start going to the doctor all the damn time. You I do know, know, you do know doctor, just being a doctor is just like being a loan officer. It's like a sales thing. You oh, yeah, yeah. You, something has oh. to go wrong with you in order for them to make this sale. Oh, it. straight up. My doctor said, oh, what? You got insurance? You got, you got the United Healthcare? <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I think I need to see you tomorrow <laughs> and the day after. He was like me and Corey Johnson at the craps table. Oh hey, God. daddy. Oh, my hey God. Hey, yeah. daddy. Yeah, no, so anyhow, this book we're talking about today is chapter 14. Okay. Okay, good number there. My mom was born on the 14th, so chapter four, 14, page 119 is where it starts, and it's unleashing the power of podcasts. Is that you? You, you, I wrote that shit. Yeah. Did, did you like write it like pen to paper, like words to keyboard or some shit? Or words to keyboard, not pen to paper. Although it probably started pen to paper, knowing me on some kind of a scratch pad. I want back like of a, a business card. Kind of, when you write down your goals or some shit, it's probably one of your goals that you wrote down and wanted to achieve. No, one of my goals that I want to achieve is I want to write my own book. I don't want to chat GP to it, chat GPT it, or do any type mm -hmm. of IAI. I do want to write a book that is themed around the shit they didn't teach us in school. And I would like my book, honestly, to be like this book. Here's why I love this book and how, why we're going to talk about it for today's okay. episode. And by the way, I do not get paid. I did not get paid to write this. Kyle Draper and Brian V wrote this? I know both of those guys. You do know both those Shout guys. Shout out Brian V and Kyle Draper. Yes, JC now showing <laughs> some love. Yeah. But yeah, so the people who get to make money yeah. on this book, if it makes money, are mm -hmm. Kyle Draper and Brian View. They made all 39 of us who wrote for this book mm -hmm. sign a legal document that says, I understand I'm doing this pro bono. I understand I ain't going to get paid shit mm. based on its sales. But this thing already within the first weekend was on Amazon number one bestseller really? list. Yeah. But it's pretty easy when you try to do something on Amazon because they do categories. So you throw it up in the mortgage category. You have your entire circle of influence all by a copy or in this case have every author. Mm -hmm. There's 39 of us mm -hmm. on top of Brian and uh, Kyle buy one. And all of a sudden, it becomes a bestseller. So we just need to earmark enough money to, for so when you launch your book, we we can just hoard 500 copies. Something like that. Yeah, you know the rub on that, if you all really want to know, 
is usually the people who write books are also some kind of a public speaker and they travel the country mm -hmm. doing the speaker circuit and they're doing that that whole thing. So instead of like, let's say someone's like, hey, Dio, we'd love to come to have, have you come speak at this large event. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I love speaking at large events. Yeah. In fact, I'm speaking at several events Holy coming up. Holy shit. Right. We, we, we have FAMP on the run in April mm -hmm. in Fort Myers, Florida. We have Housing Wires, The Gathering. I won't be speaking there, but you'll be there. I'll be there. The entire TLOP team will be there because we're the official media sponsor. Pew, 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 That's a badass pew. event, The Gathering, uh, put put on by Housing Wire. That's in April out in Arizona. And then in Vegas, Vegas in June, we are speaking. I will be speaking. We will be the media sponsor. And it is Mastermind Summit 2024, okay. June in Vegas. And then back in Orlando, End of July, beginning of August, FAMP, Florida Association of Mortgage Professionals, is having their annual event. This is their big event. You and I have been there before. Yeah. Like, you and I have hung out with Dave Savage and Barry Habib, and people Savage. like that, at this event. We've gone to their badass happy hours and their really mm -hmm. cool parties. But we're going to be there for all three days, podcasting. Oh, I'm going to be shit. presenting. I'm going to be uh, teaching breakout sessions. Really? Yes. But right now, you know what we what we charge people to do that? Nothing. Free 99? Uh, it's free 99 plus like flights and hotels. Yeah. You know, like, look, you got to help us get there. Yeah. But other than that, it's free 99. But let's fast forward and say it's 2025 and we're now the authors of our own book. You are the Maybe we, we asked Kyle Draper and Brian Bue to help us write our book. Yeah. But we put our name on it and we're the one who's going to benefit from the Just proceeds. Plagiarize as much as you can. But here's what we'll do. We'll okay. tell those events that want to have us come and speak because, look, we're fun as shit. And we do bring really cool knowledge. Buy my book in exchange for my time. That's it. You know the rub. It's like, look, I'll speak for free, but only if you buy 500 copies of my book at $20 a copy. Yes, that is the Like, oh, right. okay, yes, yes. So then all of a sudden I can get those sales. Yeah. And then people like New York Times. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Journal, let me just, let me we'll just, look let my me way. just cut you off. Yeah. People who write books don't write books to make money, Dustin. They write the book to make positive change. Do they? Fuck no. Okay, I was getting ready to say, because I'm pretty sure last time that I hung out, with Charles Dickens? Yeah, I don't know who that is. He like, said, hey, it's all about the money. Charles Dickens? Isn't that like Edgar Allan Poe or some shit? <laughs> yeah, and I hung out with him too. Yeah, I hung I'm out with The Raven. So when he was writing The Raven, yeah, yeah, I was sitting I'm there gonna, playing PS2. I'm going to write me a book too. It's going to be blank all on the inside, 300 pages front to cover, and just one letter in that bitch charge people $300. All I need is like three people to buy it. <laughs> and then I got my money back. <laughs> hey, you do you, homie. That's I cannot I wait. You. Someone help you, me write that. You do you. But this book right here, if you are a mortgage loan originator, you're going to want to look at buying this. And here's why you're going to want it. John, this is why you're going to want it. Yeah. Okay, it has pictures. I can, I like your Look, it already has pictures. Hey, no bullshit. I love the Where's Waldo aesthetic on the cover. It, I like pictures and icons and shit. It makes yep. me feel comfortable. Better yet, it has video. Have you ever known a book? That has video. Well, do tell, young sir. Yeah. So I pulled up this this book and uh -huh. I thumbed through it like like I do. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, there's a QR code. Oh, those. What those does that things. QR code do? I get out my phone, I QR code it, and pop up pops Bullshit. the video. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So like I authored my chapter, chapter 14, page 119. Shout out chapter 14, page yep. 119. All about leveraging podcasting in order to grow mm -hmm. your brand to meet more referral sources, generate more leads, close more business, make more money. All that shit. All of that. But there's two videos that we recorded mm -hmm. that are now attached to that. That's QR cool. Code. I, that's cool because I remember working on those and shot. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So you actually, you know what? Your name's not in here, John. I don't. Please don't. Your include, name, I don't need should. to be in no credits. I was never here. I'm a ghost on this earth. Please. We, we Only should. thing I'll leave behind is footprints in the sand, sir. You and Jesus. Who? You and Jesus. Come on, man. Don't go there. No, this there's, is there's a really cool. Do you ever remember going to like the doctor as a kid? And you walked in the doctor's office and there's like this this poem. It always had a picture oh, of it. Jesus and it's like two, yeah. it's like you see two two sets of footprints in yeah, the Yeah, bro. This isn't and not, then it's and then it's one. And the guy's like Just because I carried you and shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Dave. Go, oh, that's Dave Ramsey. I know. Oh. We're not that. Please stop. Hey, I love the fact that you know Dave so intimately that you know stop Dave's saying religious. like they know what? Stop yeah. with those words, please. So intimacy? Yeah. Does no. intimacy bother words you, John? Like religion and fucking. <laughs> yeah, you're you're talking to a pretty non-religious person, but it doesn't mean I didn't study it. Right? You got to have you read? Hey, no, 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 no. Have you loved reading books? Have you read you some Bible? Ooh, true story. 
no lie to lie to me and the billions of people watching. Come to right lie now. to you like I like lied to my <laughs> priest when I was a kid. I was like, yes, sir, Father CCD John. CCD class. Yeah, yes, sir, Father John. Uh, I I read I read the gospel according in, to Mark, in Luke, in and John. In, yeah, yeah, talking Uncle Luke. I started. I did. I did lots of Uncle Luke. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, we, Uncle Luke and Little John. Yeah. That's, that is. Hey, that's we're talking Bible. We're gonna talk yeah, Uncle Luke and Little John. John. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. So let's. I'm just gonna flip through this because like I'm gonna give some of the names. And here's what I love about the, about the book for me as an author. This helped me connect. This project helped me connect with people in my industry that I didn't already know. It also helped me double down on relationships with people that I did know. Mm -hmm. I am equally as excited to read this book. And the reason why I'm excited is because to me it's bathroom reading material. I can sit down, do my morning routine. I can open this book and I can hammer through a chapter in a matter of four to six minutes because the bulk of the chapters were on this two to three pages. Oh, okay. And that's including pictures. Are they like short stories, like biopics? What are they different? No, they're like mini lessons. Okay. It's like 39 digestible bite-size lessons. Because hmm. how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Yeah. So it's going to kick off. Chapter number one, the mortgage game, learning from brown M&Ms. And when you get into this chapter, it's literally going to talk about the customer experience. It's going to talk about step one is the initial lead. Step two, po uh, post-conversion, that's after you converted the lead. And then you have post-closing. It's literally creating a client for life, using your calendar, talking about the data, et cetera, et cetera. Nice. Right? Chapter two is talking about being a difference maker. I remember the book I read was called Raving Fans. Raving Fans is what taught me how to be a difference maker. And the author, Dale Vermillion. I think we're going to one day have Dale on the podcast. His son, Jake, keeps on reaching out to us. For real? Yeah, Jake's a, he's a tea locker. Shout out, Jake. Shout out, Jake Vermillion. And his dad's a, a bit of a big name in the industry, a bit of a who's who. And Dale and I don't know each other personally. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use our podcast as a way to get to know Dale personally. And have him come on as a guest. We may do that when we're out at the Housing Wire event oh, shit. later later this year. But then, you know, so so Dale writes his his words of wisdom. We slide right into chapter three. Chapter three is called The Value Gap. Okay, Richard Milligan. I know Richard Milligan. He's one of the top recruiters in the industry, right? He, Aaron Hahn, uh, we had the, the guys over at Model Match. That'd be Thomas and Eric and folks like that. But, you know, so Richard gets in The Value Gap. I don't know what, what Richard writes about because I'm going to have to go read the book myself. Um, sliding in over here, Bill Hart. So Coach Bill Hart's a huge name in this industry. Like he's been coaching loan officers since you were in diapers and I was getting in fights at Millie Middle School. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Bill's been around, right? He's he's seen a lot and he's still around. He's still getting after it. Um, his I think his company is like building champions. Like his company's been around for 20 years. 20 years ago, you were still trying to pass high school, John. Was I? Yeah, you were. And you and I like I like learning from guys like Bill, the people who have come before us, because I think there's there's a lot to be said about the older and the wiser. Yeah, right. I think there's more to be said about the future. Right. I, I, I love what we're doing because what we're doing here on TLOP and what we do by traveling the country and speaking the 13 times we're gonna do it this year and probably 30 times we're gonna do it next year is I do believe what you and I are doing is we're shaping the future of the mortgage industry. Mm -hmm. That was my big pitch to um, to the crew with uh, Mastermind Summit, right? Like Matt Emery and, and his entire team, he was like, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at like, you know, the Todd Duncans and the Sue Woodards of the world. And I'm like, yeah, Todd's phenomenal. I call him the godfather. And, you know, I remember when I was a rookie loan originator, like Sue Woodard was with Loan Toolbox and she was doing some really cool stuff with marketing and I was following her. I said, but those people helped shaped me. And I got in this business 20 years ago. So who's shaping the people who got in the business between the last five hours and the last five years? Because I think that's what we can do. I think that's the value we bring to the mortgage industry is our ability to shape the future of the mortgage industry. Because the Todds and the Sues and the Berries and the Casey's and back in the day, rest in peace, Greg Frost. Like they did a phenomenal job of shaping the future of the mortgage industry. That's how you got guys like me, guys like Amir, right? Like that's, that's how you got some of these names like Phil Treadwell, who penned chapter number five, all on mindset. You're like, this is what you're getting in this book. And when I look at Phil's particular chapter, it starts on page 49 and it ends like John, you would love page 54, page 54 y'all. 
That's my book. That's a pre. See, he played. I've never even received my ideas manifest. Yeah. Stop so, stealing my shit. So, so Phil has a way of teaching mindset in three to four pages. Plus, gives you a couple of videos that you can watch, and it just goes through. I love the fact that he brought on Mark Perkins. I don't know who Mark per Perkins is. Do you? I bet the audience doesn't know who Mark Perkins is. I know Perkins, Perkins is a restaurant. Perkins is a restaurant. I know I ain't going Did you there. ever go there? Please. That's somewhere you'd go with like your auntie. <laughs> I haven't been to stop. Like Perkins isn't even cool. Like at least Denny's and IHOP no, are open. They're 20, not, but they're that, open 24 hours. Yo, John. real talk, real talk. Like I'm kind of embarrassed for you that you still go to Denny's and the one on the corner of Lee Road and Wymore at that. I, That's brave as shit. What, what is my biggest commodity? My most valuable commodity. Time. It's not, oh my gosh, it's not the pair of Jordans that I, that I bought. You bought a pair of J's? You're going to see them tomorrow night oh when we go to the UCF basketball God. game. You can it, have these shits laced up so tight, it's going to cut off the circulation to your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's not my shoe collection, it's my time. The thing I that I hold most valuable is my time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my time, yeah. Denny's, is right. right across the street. Right. Well, what from, about my, from my office. But the time. And I love breakfast. And you can't screw up breakfast. Yes, Literally. You can. Oh, wow. A crackhead. A crackhead can make eggs, you bacon, sausage, and toast. You said time, but what about the time spent on the other end, the back ends? Time spent in the toilet. Time spent you bitching to your wife because your, your hey, stomach hurts. Guess you what? You have no Mylanta. Guess what? My stomach's all jacked up. Yeah. And I'm in my other office. Blown you know what I have? This a book. copy of Rethink <laughs> Everything in my hand, and I just crank through Mark Perkins' chapter. I don't know who Mark is. I literally don't, but here's what I love about this book. Because this book is written for loan officers, right? Hence the title, duh. Mark's a realtor. But Kyle Draper, in his creative genius, is like, wait a minute. If I'm going to teach loan officers how to be a great loan officer, I should bring in their number one referral source and have that person pen a chapter. Or to, to your point, they don't pen it, they type it. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, they, they type out a chapter. And um, yeah, that, that's what he did. And that's all in this book. And I mean, look, we can crank through, crank through it. Chapter seven is a 37 chapter book. So it's going to take forever. If I actually do this, I probably won't. But differentiating yourself from the competition. All read, right. Read it to the children, Justin. Read a passage or something that inspires you. Want you want me to? Hey, I will because this is from our man, Mike Faraci. Mike, I always F up your name. I, mean, I don't know if it's Faraci or Faraci, but Mike's the dude that we are right now hiring. Right, you you been on a call with him. We're like, yeah, that dude's fiery. He knows we're talking about the red the red button hot tube. Yes, shout out Mark. Yes, so yeah. so when our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which is going through a massive overhaul mm -hmm. that John and and team are working on behind the scenes, but when it's banging, thank this uh, individual. Well, I'm gonna thank you first, yeah. but I'm gonna thank Mike. Yeah, look, uh, but Mike took our money, but Mike also delivered on the money. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so if you want me to read, Mike is an author. Yeah. This is how Mike and I connected was through the book. I didn't know him prior to. This is awesome. Uh, but he is now a consultant for TLOP, yeah. and he is helping us uh, build out our YouTube channel. But yeah, chapter eight, it's called The Pain Point Pitch. And his, his quote is, your videos are a version of you that are out there networking and connecting with others 24-7. Right? So that's, that's Mike's rub is leveraging video yeah. marketing, just like Kyle Draper. But what I love about Mike is Mike was once an LO, which is pretty cool, mm -hmm. right? So we, we had uh, these two ladies, uh, uh, Dana and Jillian, they got together, their chapter nine, why video isn't just a choice, it's your responsibility. So you kind of see a theme where, you know, they're, they're leaning into video technology and they just didn't bring in like one person. They brought in yeah. multiple sources of information. It's just like an everything bagel. And you, you like every, everything That's bagel? all I eat. Do you not? You don't. Oh, my God. You don't eat everything bagels when you go to the bagel store? I don't even know what everything bagels are. Like, I thought are everything, you, are you I thought trolling everything me? bagels is where I went and got my sandwich no, today, the name you, of the place. You're, you're trolling me, bro. No, you're, I do not know. what every, Is that like a brand? Everything bagels is where I went and bought a corned beef sandwich today, and I ate while I was I'm waiting I'm not for, making this shit up, ladies and gentlemen. He's. I, you have to be trolling me. You don't know everything bagel, sir. No, it's a type of bagel? Cause I like I like the 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 uh, cinnamon raisin bagel. I knew you were gonna say like something funky like raisin bagels. Or I also like the the Asiago cheese bagels, but I do not know what is this everything. The, are you? I have no with idea, me? John. No. Oh, my God, this is a this is amazing. You're forty how? You're 40. I'm, I'm forty five years of age as of today. 
Well, no, today's not my birthday, but currently, on the day that we record, I am. Yo, hard. hey, let me tell you, hey, I'm gonna take you out one day, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on everything bagels. It's just gonna change your life. But what is it? Is it a type of bagel? I cannot. I like, cannot, do I buy it at the bread at the bread section? Don't. In ba- Publix? I just please call someone that you know or text your son and be like, "Hey, what's an everything bagel?" I'm gonna have to bing this up. Huh? Don't. I want you to. Add, I need a human response in real time. You want to call my son right now? No, no, I, I, will, I will grab my cell no, phone right now and I will. I will hold. We'll it up save to that the, for the podcast. I will, I'm, I'm gonna hold it up to the podcast. And, and he's like, Dad. Son. He's yeah, like, Dad. Yeah. Where's my phone? Do you put it down oh, on the floor? Oh, I do. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right, we're you. not going to do that. Gee, okay, but this is great. This is a great mental break. But yes, okay. I guess Dustin is a serious when he says what well, is everything he people. But we digress. We digress. Yeah. So I'm like, by the time you get to chapter ten, you are on personal brand. You're on thought leadership. You're on sales. Right. It's it's one particular chapter penned by uh, Lindsay. Mitra Silas, I totally butchered her last name. Yes, you did. Lindsay and I do not know each other yet, but you know what? A group of us are trying to go out to the gathering together. I told him about the pimp it's ass house gathering together. Well, we're, we'll be at Housing Wire's big event, the gathering. Oh, it's gonna. We have that pimp ass house that we amazing. rented. I was party. like, hey, hey, yeah, we we could maybe have a, a gathering at the, the three gathering day party. Yeah, it's gonna be a three day event. We're gonna be live podcasting. It's gonna be like a streamer house. Yeah, but in this, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna ignore that. But you know what that is. You know what a streamer house is, but you don't know what a goddamn everything bagel is. No, not not amazing. I, I, I don't. You know what? You should make it a goal to have every single author that helped in this book on the podcast. It's like a what long... if some of them are boring, John? Well, you'll have to. That'll be your job as the host to not make it boring. And I'm pretty sure Kyle Draper and Brian View did an amazing job vetting and you know, currently you know, thoroughly researching these people before they threw them in the book. So, <clears throat> yeah. All right. So Lindsay writes the five C's framework. The five C's of personal branding is a concept that can be used to identify the key components of your personal brand. It includes clarity, consistency, character, connection, and credibility. Oh, all right. Say we got some personal brand stuff all up in here. James Duncan's going to slide in at chapter 11. He does the do's and don'ts of personal branding. Here's what I love. It's not economic. It is not um, what we call academic inbreeding. Do you know what academic inbreeding is like the same thoughts coming out of the same person's mm-hmm. mind. Academic inbreeding is someone getting their bachelor's degree from the same learning institution as well as their master's, right? Academic inbreeding. No, if you want to have diversity of thought, you bring in diversity of character, even if those people are speaking on very similar topics. And that's what I love about this book. Not only is it easy to read, it includes pictures plus videos and it's digestible. So Greg Share, by the way, Greg is someone, if you're not following him on LinkedIn, you must. S-H-E-R. He produces a show similar to us, but his is more like uh, with the evening news. Hi, I'm Greg Share. So less, and on tonight's... So less cussing and rabbit holes. Oh, no, no, no. Greg cusses because I've actually read most of his chapter. Oh. Nope, there are four-letter words in there. Oh, wow. But Greg's actually father is a like renowned broadcaster. Greg lives up in... Um, Baltimore, Maryland. He's with a more, uh, mortgage, NFM, I think, is the mortgage company that he represents. But he's a great thought leader, and he is a leader in our industry. He's someone you should follow. But like he's he's talking about chapter twelve is a social is social a real strategy? Because he's coming from a from from a, uh, a different school of thought. Uh, a, a school of thought where it's like, look, he's second generation broadcaster, and he's using this broadcast background to to promote his personal brand as well as his company's brand. And, and shine a light on what not just he's doing, but also his team of loan officers. Mm-hmm. His team of loan officers actually includes this badass originator. I'm so stoked to have her on the show, John. She's coming on in April. Jordan Nutter. Y'all should be following Jordan. I don't know Jordan, but I want to get to know Jordan. She has over 250,000 followers on TikTok. Mm. She crushes it with her content creation. I MMI'd her because I was like, hey, is this just like, a cute millennial who puts together like really trendy, fun TikToks. And it's like, yes, but she also crushes it. Like she's a legit two, three, four million dollar a month producer. Dang. And what she did recently, I think is amazing and badass. She, her husband, and their like 10 month old baby rented out their apartment in Atlanta. They she bought an RV, wrapped it in all of her face, her name, her likeness. Yeah. They're traveling the country, promoting financial literacy and home ownership, 
because she is a ambassador with um, First Home IQ, just like we are. Mm -hmm. And she's obviously lead generating, networking, and building out a robust mm -hmm. referral network by doing so. And then she's chronicling it all on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. But she actually works with Greg, nice. who, who wrote this chapter, and she's going to be a guest on TLOP next month. I'm super stoked about it. Um, how about our girl, Allie Cardi? Okay. Okay, Allie, I love what Allie's doing because Allie's fresh out of college, like two or three years. If if we're trying to represent the future mm -hmm. of the mortgage industry, like to me, the future of the mortgage industry are people who are probably aged on the very low end, 26, on the high end, probably pushing 46. Mm -hmm. But the average is probably the average of the first time home buyer, 33 to 36. Like those are the people that we're truly leaning into with our content, with with what we do. I mean, Allie may herself have just barely turned 26 or she's still a couple birthdays out. But what I love is that she put on her big girl pants. She stepped up to the plate in this industry and said, I can bring value. I represent the future of the future. Mm -hmm. If the average first time home buyer is 33 to 36 and her friends are all 26 are all 23 to, to, to 29. You know, she's like, look, y'all, if you're not at least looking back at us, in preparing, we too are coming, Darn. and our consumer behavior is gonna is gonna look a little different. What do you mean? That's just gonna drastically look different. Well, okay, there you go. So, <laughs> who is Gen Z, and how do you target Gen Z? She's gonna update you because you gotta be looking out the windshield and not in the rear view. If you're looking in the rear view mirror, you're focused on what used to work. That means you, the cop already pulled you over in the speed trap. <laughs> Maybe it does. <laughs> it does mean that actually. <laughs> then you're like, oh shit! I hope that's not me. I hope that's not me. I hope that's not me. God damn it! It's got me. your ass. Yes, but no. Like Ali is kind of like how my dad taught me to drive. When my old man taught me how to drive, he was like, you don't look at the car in front of you. You don't look at the car in front of that. You look two cars in front of the car in front of you. He said, you start there and you work your way back. And if you do so, then you'll always know what's going on in front of you. Ali represents, and her generation represent the two cars in front of the car in front of you. And I think many of us, if we want to figure out where we're going, we have to be following what is Allie and her generation doing. So shout out to Allie Cardi. Allie's doing a great job in our industry mm -hmm. in terms of um, bringing awareness to this Gen Z because she represents it herself. And then she also was asked by Brian to, uh, to, to pen an article. Then you get into some schlep, some schmuck, some douchebag, first name Dustin, last name Owen. You can find him on LinkedIn if you want to. You can follow his show. They call Skip it that Lop. shit. Skip his show. Yeah, but but he's going to give you all an idea about how podcasting can be a blueprint for success, which is pretty awesome. Then our girl, shout out to Kayla Callender. Mm -hmm. Like, by the way, episodes 14, 15, 16, actually 13, there's going to be some banging epi uh, episodes, chapters. chapters. Thank you. I'm still stuck on podcast. I know. Yeah, but if you're telling me I get to go from Greg to Allie, Allie to D.O., D.O. to K.K., Kayla Callender? Yeah, Fargo, North Dakota. That sounds like a good yes. read. Yeah, she's she's the it LinkedIn girl. Like, she's the girl on LinkedIn. She also crushes it on other social media platforms. But you can see where, I mean, we go on and on and on. Yeah, it's like the, I do see. Yeah, I mean, look, ABC. ABC, this is Dan Smokaska. I like Dan. I follow Dan. We know each other via social. We've never met in person. Um, I probably butchered his last name, too. but <laughs> Probably. ABC, always be Closing. creating. Oh, sorry. Always be creating. No, his chapter 16 is the win framework. The win framework, which is pretty awesome. Chapter 17 is discovering your purpose. Thank you, Michelle Castle. Uh, we all need to find our why. Ryan Grant, I actually know Ryan Grant, Neo Home Loans. Ryan's an ex-top producer, runs a phenomenal region, and he is really big into mindset and doing things the right way, doing things for the right re reason, mm -hmm. understanding your belief system, mm -hmm. you know, all that rah, rah stuff that you're probably like, wake me up when he's done. Yes. Thank you. But I'm probably like, Hey man, I would like to learn more. Right. Cause like Brian does a good job of that. There's no, no, Ryan does. And then so does Brian. Brian Covey does a good job of that with revolution mortgage. Ryan grants with, with Neo, but his chapter 18 belief in action. Like, yeah, I can't wait to read that because I'm sure if, if it was, Actually written by Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, top notch. I dotted T crossed. It's it's legit. Okay. Chapter 19, Brian Weiss coming out of the Chicago region. Reignite your career with ideas and action. Okay. Like there's many people that when you say rethink everything, everything's pretty broad and everything you know encapsulates 
a lot of different topics. And Brian's like, look, you can be a 20, 30 year vet and this book is still going to benefit you because you may be at a point where you're not ready to retire. Maybe you can't financially afford to retire, but you're going to have to reignite and this book's going to help you reignite. There's this dude, Major Singleton. I would love to have Major Singleton on the show. Okay. Yes. You should follow him, John. Come on, I know bro. you should follow him. Okay. Use my account. Nope. Use my account. I'm never. The dude's funny as shit. I'm never he, touching Facebook, Instagram again in my life. I'm never touching it again. He's a mortgage broker that I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to force you to do it. I'll look on your phone. While you're packing a bowl and I'm pouring you a Heineken. I'll look something to put. Uh, I'll look on okay. your phone. That, okay. That's what I'll look right. Yeah, but yes. But anyhow, he crushes it. Uh, he's, he's a loan originator. He's actually a mortgage broker. Uh, in Texas, but um, so I like this. I like the fact that they just don't have thought leaders, right? You know, because a thought leader could be quite honestly a hacker or a has been, right? Oh, a gosh. thought leader is like, hey, bro, what do you do today? Show me your success. Show me who, because they follow you, they crush it and they're following your footsteps. Like, but what I love about Major and what I love about this book is it's like, no, 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 who's in the trenches? Who's doing a great job? Who's crushing it? Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, you know, for him, it's all about the power of education. And I know he's like one of the top VA lenders in the country. Um, there's this guy, uh, Michael Nasserfar. Michael Jordan, neuro neurosurgeons and a bad boss. Got my attention. Can't wait to read that one. Shane Kidwell. I don't know Shane, but he's the guy that always has his hat on backwards. And I don't know if I trust people with their hat on backwards. So Shane, I can't wait to meet you in person because I'm sure you're extremely trustworthy. I'm sure you and I would hit it off. Uh, but, um, I, I was, I had this friend who had this stepdad that every time we wore our hats on backwards, he would want to like fist fight us yeah, because we had our hats on backwards. Probably had too many bud ices that day. Ah, uh, he come on saying that. What, what was the word that he used? He's like, oh, you're just a bunch of, uh, hooligans. You look like a bunch of hooligans with your hats on backwards. Mm. Anyhow. Uh, but no, Shane, Shane's a big name in the mortgage industry. I was only giving you a hard time, Shane, about your hat on backwards. Yeah, yeah, uh, but he's a, he, he, he's a coach. He's a, he's a top producer. The guy does a great job. And I couldn't imagine uh, learning from anyone better the art of the sale, chapter 22. So it's really cool to see Shane Kidwell, an, a legit producer, Major Singleton, a legit producer. My guess, my guess is if you MMI'd Michael Nasserfar, legit producer, because that's kind of the, how this... Uh, how this book is flowing. Okay. Uh, we're given the opportunity to learn from actual originators whose uh, whose hands are dirty because they're down in the trenches getting shit done. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, I didn't know this. Our girl Jamie Lynch. Jamie Lynch is with the NBA, John. She is actually who helped us interview Bill Kilmer when we were oh, in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Jamie's super cool, Jamie, right? Yeah. Yes. She's actually a, a fellow Floridian. Damn, man. Yeah, Everyone's so, featured in his so, book. Yeah, so like they're even representing the NBA. Jamie's going to talk about industry adv advocacy. That's that word for me. <laughs> um, you know, Victoria is going to come in, talk about capital markets. Right, This is important stuff. This is the industry as a whole. These are things that you need to know if you're going to rethink that this like industry. That's an awesome book to read if you're a mortgage loan originator. Uh, sounds like it. Sue Buswell, Credit Expertise is Chapter 25. I don't know Sue, but she tags me all the time in LinkedIn, and I so appreciate that. I like being tagged. I have yet to go and like and and put the setting on LinkedIn where it says only people that I approve can tag me. Yeah, but she's constantly is is a thought leader. Her expertise is credit. Christopher Griffith Griffith, kind of like Andy Griffith, but mm -hmm. Christopher Griffith Griffith, uh, understanding the veteran mindset. Ooh. I wonder if he's talking about the veteran in the industry or the military veteran. That's your favorite. You know what? That's your favorite loan product. You are going to have to tune in to find out. Jason Steer, transform transformative, transformative. You can't read. Transformative impact. Look, there's certain words that you struggle with. That I struggle with, John. A you can make fun of me all you want. I want you to talk with fake teeth in your mouth and see how many words you butcher. It's probably not the teeth, is it? <laughs> you know, I'm, everybody got fake teeth in Hollywood. I'm not in Hollywood yet. Oh, you think we can get there? Hopefully. Can you get to the end of this book preview so I can go? It's hot in here. Mike Cox, education is everything. Is like it? his brother's Mike Hunt. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> um, Kelly Yale, chapter 29. What is the LO system of the future? Oh, I don't know, Kelly. I'm going to have to read that one. Stacia Weshar. 
Oh, here we go. This is getting into, hey, it took us 30 chapters, John, but we're talking to you now. I guess. Artificial intelligence. Thank God. I Artific- can't wait for it to take Hey, we, we actually know Scott Shane because I was on Scott's podcast last year. Yeah. He hangs out with our boy Steve Richmond. Okay. And um, also this lady, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember her name. Cares. Okay. Who parties the hardest in the industry? That's who I need to start hanging out with. Who well, I got goes you. the hardest? I got you. I got you. I'm come back to you on that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Scott's writing about AI simplified. Okay. After oh, after Scott, we got Michael Hammond. Shout out to Michael Hammond. He is like my CMO of choice. If you need a a chief marketing officer, but he's like one of those fractional CMOs. So he's like he's like uh he's fractional. He's for hire. Like you can hire him for like, hey, I just need you for like two hours a week. What would that cost me to have a chief marketing officer mm-hmm. for just two hours a week? His chapter though, because I have actually read his chapter. I know Michael personally. We hung out in Philadelphia at the NBA <laughs> event. But um, chapter chapter thirty two, he's like re, rethink content creation. But here's what I love about what he wrote. He literally lists out like various prompts that you can use when you are utilizing AI and this is what I need. Like I need, like, look, I know what chat GPT is, but tell me how to use it. Like I know what a car is, teach me how to drive it. And what Michael's episode, his episode, his chapter is gonna do. Like, I mean, he walks you through Grammarly, how to use it, why it's important. Chat GPT, ad creative dot AI, Centra, Adobe stock images, Riverside FM and Opus clips. Like these are all things that guys like you and I use on the daily. He as a fractional CMO, he's bringing his talents and pinning them to paper and then letting Brian View and Kyle Draper publish them and then get rich off of his thoughts and his time. It's the American way, Dustin. Andrew Pollock. Uh, Andrew Pollock's someone who we're trying to connect with actually behind the scenes. I've yet oh, connected yeah. with Andrew, but he's all about how do I uh, how do I generate more referrals um, over more leads? And then obviously, how do I convert those referrals? Because if you convert a referral, you get a sale, you get a sale, you make money. If you make money, you can save money. If you save money, you can retire. No, you make money, you spend that shit. Stop you and your saving. Nobody wants to hear about that. I want to hear people tell me about how I can blow my money on the dopest shit the fastest. That's where I come in. Jesus. Hey, hey. Nobody wants to keep saving money. What the hell? Stop saying that shit. I'm so boring. I'm so basic. Save this. I 10%. Apologize. Do this. Nah, fucking ball out. Buy that Louis Vuitton purse you can't afford. All right. Eat at that. <laughs> All right. No, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. We're going to talk about that. Uh, chapter 34, Digital Engagement by Scott Nicholson. Check it out. Our boy, Jeff Zemfer. Oh, shout out, Jeff. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I got your attention. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. Unlock the secret to doubling your realtor referrals. Mm-hmm. Dude, Jeff dominates becoming an educator, helping loan officers become educators so that he's attracting realtors to refer him and to refer his company. Yeah. So, yeah, Jeff's going to write about the things that he's an expert on. Scott Payne's going to slide in. Uh, reminding you why every lead matters. And then we're going to close this thing out with Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe Peterson. Uncle Joe Peterson is going to talk about the power of white space, not white noise, the power of white space. But that's the book, y'all. Rethink everything you know about being a next-gen loan officer. I double-dog dare you to go to Amazon and buy that shit. It's like less than 30 bucks. You could crank this out in a matter of just one month if you put it on top of the toilet and, uh-huh. and, and chose to read that's a, that's a one semester. chapter every time you have to visit that porcelain throne. Now, John, you, you want to talk about partying. You, who, who do you I said, need to who, know? Yeah. You, I don't care about your know? numbers. I don't give a damn about your MMI. I want to know that guy or gal or group of individuals go so hard that it's like, yeah, you probably, if you've ever seen with them, it's like, yeah, they're probably playing all night. They'll play through the entire thing. Maybe show up to like, like most people want to, they'll show up to the first day seminar really excited, sober, and then after that, it's fucking downhill. Those I want to know those right. people. So the good news is, if you start with someone in the mortgage industry, yeah, there's a 65 percent chance that mm-hmm. they go hard. Okay, so you're good there. Yeah. Go to any mortgage conference, especially one that's geared towards sales professionals. Yeah, they get smacked quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know what? There's an event in Vegas. If you're looking, you should play that game. Like the game should be like, who can hang with JC? No one. That's the game. No who one. can hang with JC? They can because they have responsibilities like kids and like 
mortgages and shit. You don't want to hang not out the with future. Me. Not not those that are not those that are twenty six to thirty six. They haven't started their families. Where's yet, Waldo? John? Where's JC? Come find me in Vegas yeah. and turn up for a check because I will be out there. Allegedly. Yeah, you know that's what happened is uh, our guy Troy Holm. He used to be able to go hard until he went and had a baby, oh, and he done screwed know. it you up. No, yeah, you didn't know. I didn't know what. He's pregnant again. Oh, no way. An idiot. No way. Yeah. I just had lunch with he and Julissa. Yeah, I think that, that day they found out later that. That day they got pregnant because of lunch with me? No, man. I got, People, the, I got the magic. I got it's so annoying. Fucking kids and parents everywhere I look, there's a parent and a kid, some fucking screaming and hollering. Yeah, that's what happened with you and Ty. Ty started having babies. You're like, Ty, I can't hang out with you. Ty, now. but Ty, uh, shout out Ty, though. You can't, can't hang out with Ty. Uh, Plus, Ty's kind of... He he replaced you with uh, Ocho Cinco. He did. Yeah, you used to be his rider. Ty, Ty, you know, like, Ty, but Ty, like Ty, is, me, Ty knows though. Like we're on the same wavelength. Ty's on his final lap in corporate America. He's just on his uh, what do you call it? His his victory his swan, tour. Yeah, yeah what, what is he like? Swans, his farewell his, tour. Yeah, like he's doing farewell, farewell tour. tour. That's what he's doing right now. Hey, he's he's keeping he's keeping a. You didn't name any names. Him. You just said everyone in the mortgage industry. Give me names. Of actual people? Oh, people who like, yo, that guy goes hard. Like, everybody knows, like, oh, there's JC. Ha, 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 here's a beer on me. Yes, please give me more. But, like, they, can you name somebody? You don't throw nobody in the bus. Because I'm looking, you know what? Because I'm going to call you know people what? out. Because I'm looking at him, Dustin. You, <laughs> <laughs> hey, truth be told, truth be told, I'm, I'm not shy. Him. I am not shy. Oh, I am I am not afraid you know to from got... time to time be that guy. I've been working on not being that guy. I know you can but hey, hey, that guy still exists. I know you I know you like because you are a senior leader and you're in the mortgage industry, you didn't want to be known for that. But now you're gonna have people like don't get don't get surprised when people are gonna start having their iPhones out you just filming you like this. I mean, I, I can tell you this. I have been out late. <laughs> late with like after midnight. Late, not late with C level executives, with um, yeah, with owners of mortgage companies. Yeah, keep going. This is getting <laughs> good. Keep going. I'm not naming names. Okay, I don't I'm not names. gonna put anybody okay. on blast. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a night. One of my most fun nights happened almost a year ago to to the date. Uh, it was me. It was um, oh gosh, Michael. And Bob Brokeschmidt. Wow, these are names. Okay. Okay. So, so Bob Brokeschmidt is like someone I look up to. Okay. Because he is the president of the Mortgage Bankers Association. Oh shit! Shut yeah, up. yeah, Shut yeah, up. yeah. It, Shut and up. look, I was and I was kind of like that guy. I was enamored. I was like, it was my first time really meeting Bob in a in a in a personal setting. Yeah. So you go start. But yeah, it was it was after all the events had concluded. Only the hotel bar was open, and there may have been like twelve or fifteen of us left in the hotel bar. And I got to sit there and have a just legitimate, friendly conversation with the guy who leads the number one trade organization for the industry that I love and I support. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't know Bob well enough to be like, oh, man, that dude goes hard because I'm sure it's only 1130 or midnight because it's a hotel bar. But what I do know is he was a real human being, that, that he is one with the people, and he seems like a cool-ass dude. So if Drinking Bob, a shot of Louis the Thirteen. Oh, uh, I think we were actually drinking – bourbon i'm pretty confident we we're drinking bourbon that night but if but but if, if i were to say hey bob represents the mortgage industry and he's the leader and he has to take that leadership role mm -hmm. and he's still willing to be at the hotel bar 11 30 you better believe everyone else that follows in his footsteps 11 30 is when they're waking up from their power nap john mm -hmm. because they want to come give you a run for your money but i'm not going to name names if you're not dry heaving in the first you session i have hung out with renee rodriguez yeah and it wasn't early when we went to bed it wasn't okay okay but if you're not if you're not dry heaving in the first session the next morning you you ain't trying so 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 he, here's where i know i'm still the the rookie mm -hmm. i'm still the the youngster of the group right because i'm so fortunate and so blessed that matt emery was willing to raise his hand and say you know what we would love to have t-lop come to, to the mastermind summit be the media sponsor dio i'd love to have you do a 30 minute keynote on the main stage but I'm going to give you the morning on day two. Because yeah. the morning on day two, it, it's it's not the same Shraggler. crowd. It's not the same crowd as the afternoon on day one. The morning on day one, or even the afternoon on day two. Like, like you you either have to fight. I've done this before. Like, like, like I've given a keynote on the last day at 9 a.m. You and three other people in the well, janitorial And staff. by the way, first I was bummed. Yeah, I was bummed. We were in freaking Nashville, Tennessee. It's my like favorite town to party in. I don't know 
why. So we are in Nashville, and they're like, hey, D.O., we got your spot. You're 9 a.m. Friday morning on an event that started Wednesday. Yeah, nobody's there. And I'm like, physically. so my first thought, because I'm pretty self-centered, is you just screwed me over. Mm-hmm. I was going to go out Thursday night, and I was going to hit all the honky-tonks on, on Broadway. Mm-hmm. I now need to get my ass in bed before midnight because I got to get up hey. and present for an hour and bring the funk, bring the noise, and bring the energy. The choice you made. Well, it's a choice they made. Mm-hmm. I had. I would have played yeah. through. Oh. Why? why you, oh, How, you don't you have a presentation in 20 minutes? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. yeah. No. So so I, I, I was in bed by, by midnight, but what I learned is that's a tough crowd. Because you look out and every third seat's empty, and every other seat, that person is doing everything they can not to dry heave. They're like, okay, just don't embarrass yourself. Just, just, just you did enough last night. So, um, I'll tell you this: come out to the gathering, and uh, that'll be a good warm up, okay? And we'll, and we'll, we'll maybe do a teaser game: who can hang Man. with JC? Nobody. And then. When we get out to Morgan's Mastermind. Shit, nobody. It'll be on like Donkey Kong, and then you'll do an entire episode. Instead of you reading from a book, I'll, you're just going to start I'll, telling stories. Reading from a book, I'll be, reading, I'll be reading from a rap sheet, because half of y'all people are going to get arrested trying to keep <laughs> up with me. That's what you mean. That's what I'm like, uh, and, okay, then, but, uh, and then lastly, lastly, I'll, I will share this. Um, you asked about why do we talk about boring shit like saving money. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm going to give you one. This okay. this is just for JC. Okay. This is the easiest way to ever be responsible with your money mm-hmm. and be a derelict at the same time. Don't put it up your nose or in your lungs. You can do that. Okay. It can go up your nose and go <laughs> in your lungs. I don't care where you put it. I tried to put it in any, any veins, right? No, nah, I don't do nah, nah, nah. We didn't play with that. All right. Um, you first have to start by saving 20%. You then you then have to pull out whatever money you need to live that month. Twenty five percent. Then whatever's left, <laughs> I don't care how you spend it. It could be on a freaking Gucci belt. No, it not could Gucci. be on. We don't rock Gucci. Only Stemmies rock Gucci. It's Louis Vuitton or nothing. Okay, what are Stemmies? That's all. Oh. Is that everything plain bagel too? Everything. God. Everything plain bagel. Oh my. God. Yeah. Okay, and Stemmies. How about this? My kids were showing me some shoe that's like five or six hundred dollars, and it's not on. It's not a Jordan. It looked like a knockoff, old ass, crappy Converse low top. Yeah, they, but they're like, oh no, this is like the new shoe. That's why I got out of the game, Dustin. Yeah, I put on a pair of jeans now, like just comfortable jeans, like jeans you go out to the club, and it feels like I'm getting dressed up in, in fucking slacks. <laughs> Oh, because what wearing jeans? Yeah, now because this is all I wear is comfortable items. No, do uh, do my jeans go over my J's or inside of my J's? Well, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> He's Dustin Nolan. I'm John Coleman. We thank you so much for turning for fuck for right. tuning into T Lop. We'll, we'll we'll leave it at this. If you're a mortgage loan originator and you're looking for a good book to read. Do us a favor, buy this book. If it sucks, blame John Coleman. Blame. I don't give a shit. I'm going to find out anyway. I don't read the comments anyway. <laughs> blame, blame, blame Kyle Draper. Blame oh, Brian View. If you're a mortgage loan originator and you want to increase your leads by 32% in the next 90 days, if you're a mortgage loan originator and you want to increase the number of funded loans by one to two closings a month within the next six months, give us a call. Hit us up. You need to become a member of the TLOP community. Let us coach you. Let us train you. Let us provide you with the resources you need because these are the same resources that top producers use every single day in their business. We'll help you get your mind right. We'll help you get your habits in place. And we will equip you with the knowledge and the tools that you need to take your career to the next level. It's TLOP Online. It's a subscription-based membership. I highly advise you jump on board, become a part of this community before you miss out. On that note, yeah. he's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. We have just done an entire episode talking about a book that just launched that you can buy on Amazon. That is all the time we have for you today. We do look forward to catching you on the next episode. Peace.